Welcome back to WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively celebrating 31 years amongst friends. We are at Costas. I'm wearing the shirt. They've got holiday parties here. Imagine that during the holidays at the uh, the famous establishment here in Dundalk Acostas. They have that going on. The Maryland Lottery is bringing it all to, uh, together for us today. I'm going to be giving away some, uh, not just some Raven scratch-offs, but I've, I've got like a whole new batch, thanks to Roz, of the holiday cash drops. John Allen is here. Uh, we got our friends here from Hammerjacks and a documentary, and we're going to be telling old rock and roll stories. Gina Shock going to be here a little later on. Penguins at East Point Mall, I'm sure will be involved, uh, John Allen. But these folks, was, first off, Anne Marie's from the Dina. Uh, Anne Marie, uh, I've known for 30 years. I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to date too much of us. And of course, Steve uh, is well, here as well. Wait a second. Didn't you just do it, though? No, I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> just a little 35 bit. 35 plus one. She's 36. Come okay, on now. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and Steve, of course, you guys came to me year, year and a half ago and said, we're going to put together, hold that. That's, that's an original. Hammerjacks documentary is what you're you're gonna put together. Yeah. I had a an advanced screening. John has had an advanced screening. He and I have only spoken very very briefly about the memories we saw. But my wife said she hasn't seen me smile in 90 minutes straight yelling at. We, we didn't watch it on a TV. We watched it on a computer screen. I'm screaming. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, they got John. Hey, you know, talking to somebody else. Congratulations on uh, doing something. I think John and I would both agree was a part of our childhood that you guys have captured in a way and a part of our life that brought it back to life. In, in, um, you said you had 500 hours of guys like us telling stories, right? Yeah, well, 50, yeah, but that's, I mean, that's enough to, to get through in an edit. But John goes back on this. We've, we started working on this thing about six years ago, so yeah. it's been three, a long... At least three haircuts ago. At least yes. three haircuts, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw myself up there. I was like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, Is so it was, it was a long process. A lot of people to talk to. A lot of people wanted to be involved. But, um, you know, it's also a lot of pressure, too, because like you were saying, it's this... This hammerjacks meant a lot to a lot of people, and it was a big part of a lot of our lives. So to try to get that right, to make people try to revisit that time a little bit in a good way, you know, it's a, it's a big task. And um, I, I certainly couldn't have uh, gone too far. I, I started before I met Anne Marie, but then Anne Marie came on board, and everything just opened up because. What did she you know about hammerjack? Did you have a, uh, a yeah. background story with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, I went to University of Maryland. And I was an intern for WHFS, so oh, we'd okay. so oh, okay. we'd go out and uh, do shows there quite a bit. And I was actually at a wedding. Nisi, my the DJ that I worked with, uh, mm -hmm. got married in the club, so I had that story. But um, yeah, you know, I have stories if you if you want to hear some. My 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 favorite one is that it's the only time I ever got a girl's phone number in a bar ever. <laughs> ever was, ever was it Hammerjacks? Was oh, it was real? <laughs> was the number real? You know what? Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, it was because what happened. <laughs> Because what happened was that I ended up calling her, you know, late at night like a complete dunce. And, uh, <laughs> and she answered. was, yes, <laughs> still living with her folks. And so I froze and hung up, right? <laughs> you remember Star 69, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> called no. me right back and just let it <laughs> ring. And I eventually picked up and they're like, yeah, she lives with her parents and you don't call here. And I'm like, thanks, t tell her I called or something, right? That was the end of that. That was the end of that. But, yeah, Hammerjacks was so wide open that even me, even I could get a phone number in that place, right? Oh, yeah. man, you're giving me stories about girls now that I'm, I'm recollecting stories. I've, I met a, a, a woman there. I mean, I was a kid, Anne yeah. Marie, and I told yeah. her, I was 17 years old in Hammerjacks, right? Yeah. And I always thought that, that I was younger than you because you were tending bar there, and it turns out that I'm older than So, I mean, it's that time period of 1988, 89, 90, 91, the coming of age, I would yeah. say. I was there one night, and I was the music critic, right? So I was backstage, and then she wasn't a woman, but she was in her 20s, and I might have not have been, right? I was certainly old enough to drive, and I was there, and I always had a, an extra ticket for review, so I could always kind of get a hot date if I, or at least a guy to hang out, somebody that wanted to use me. to. So this woman said Scorpion Show was next week, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I got, you know, I'll go to Scorpions with you, and I, I mean, she was kind of so hot to trot that I couldn't even I was you know yeah. I was a kid right yeah, yeah. she said well I live down in Greenbelt come down and we'll go in my car and, and you can park your car here and I'm like okay cool she had like this burnt orange uh, Porsche 911 <laughs> yeah. and I'm like the 19 year old kid from Dundalk you know with 
I, you know, I was intimidated. But these are the kind of women you met at Hammerjacks. You could meet anybody at Hammerjacks. Oh, yeah. As it was to the point where you think, I mean, the wrestlers would come through, rock stars would come yeah. through, and for you, Anne Marie, to have been a bartender there. And to have been privy to in and out and backstage and all that stuff. Why this doc? Like, what about this thing made it work? Because, I mean, you knew everyone. You had everybody's phone number to be able to make it good, right? Yeah, it's uh, so many stories and, and um, just the people that, that we all still, we're all still kind of like a family, you know? Um, I, I always talk about Facebook. Um, and you know all the mutual friends that you have you know I've got 300 400 mutual friends like probably John and a lot of those people are just you know they're all from the Hammerjacks days and and, and we still you know we, we see each other at, at shows and um, it's just uh, it's just a big family and it, it, it always it's just uh, warms my heart that um, you know we we can still go back and, and reminisce and and um, just to be able to do this this documentary was great to be able to get people back together and um, you know share their experiences and um, it, it, it was it was it was a lot of fun. It was a huge undertaking. I mean, they they told the story. I mean, you saw it. So you know, the, the club started its life as one thing. You know, on Charles Street, South Charles Street, and then it moved to you know the, which they found out was a an old brewery, this old warehouse building, and that was uh, you know it was called you know the club side initially before they built the concert hall, before there were bands playing there. I remember the night Eddie Money played in the MTV Jocks game, but I I was just a 98 rock. I was just a kid, right? I mean, I couldn't get in. I was too yeah. young. I mean, I remember seeing the date from, you had the flyer and all that, yeah. and I'm like, I was like 15, 16 years old, and that right? was the opening of the concert hall? Correct? Yes. Concert hall, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. My parents were there that night, and yeah. actually the, uh, the, the, the tickets that we used in the film was my mom's, oh, my wow. mom and dad's. So well, I mean, it, cool. these mementos and, and things, and Bud Becker, obviously, yeah. was a part of this and I probably should have invited Bud over here today to be a part of this. He's such a part of uh, the, the historian and yes, yes. sharing pictures. He has all the Keith Van Dorn's pictures, right? Oh yeah, so, so all a, a good percentage of the photography in the film comes from Bud. Well, yeah. and he was the voice. Like when you mm -hmm. heard those Hammerjacks ads on 98 Rock, you know, it was like, whoa. Like as soon as you heard Bud's voice, you know, the club that rules the street, Hammerjacks. Yeah. You know, right, you're, right, like, right. you're like, whoa, yeah. You know, it's so like you, you made it, you know, if you were in one of those ads with Bud's uh, great timber. Well, it's rich with stories, right? I mean, when you're talking about sourcing something, I don't know what it means outside of Baltimore, outside of the Mid-Atlantic area, or what it would mean to rock and roll bands that are scattered around, or the legend of it being on, you know, the cover of a Motley Crue album, or just that there are these. It was an iconic thing, even if you just drove through Baltimore to see the giant orange sign yeah. that literally sat above the freeway. You. It was it was its own billboard. It was it was the thing you saw when you drove into Baltimore when there was no football stadium here, yeah, right? right? Like it was the thing that glowed like Las Vegas. Um, Steve Narangis, correct? That is correct. All yeah, right, Anne Marie it. is here as well as John Allen from. Uh, should I just say Stone Horses? What am I going? Because I there's a rumor, Child's Play. <laughs> I saw it on a bill and it was new and it's empty. What's going on with you, man? Uh, I got to get this involved here. We're, yeah, we're playing the uh, M3 uh, festival this year, May sixth, I think. Um, I think we're supposed to be the first band on the main stage. That uh, gets us there early then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what time that is, but... <laughs> well, I hope it's not 112 degrees, because I'm going to be sticking... Her. Sticks is playing that night, right? Yeah, they yes. are. Yeah. I hope it's warm, yeah. I hope it's 102 degrees. <laughs> it's going to be great. That's a great bill that day. Lita Ford's playing, yeah. Red Extreme's playing, Winger's playing. It's going to be a lot well, of Well, that's fun. a Hammerjacks yeah. reunion. I mean, all really of is. us, yeah. the Absolutely. people who yeah. love your band, bands, I should say, over the course of years, yeah. to, to come together... Music's what brings people together. It was, the, it was the, the thing that made Hammerjacks Hammerjacks was the music part of this. You sent me some sort of soundtrack thing today. Um, yeah. And, and putting the doc together, I didn't know what to expect, right? You guys invited me down. My whole involvement in this, John, was Anne-Marie hit me and said, we're doing a doc, will you tell stories? And I'm like, oh, I got stories, you know? <laughs> so I came down, you set me up on the stage at Merriweather and some other folks. I, I saw Brian Ford when I was coming in and out. Mm -hmm. And I sat down for an hour and we walked out and I kidded to my wife, I'm like, God, I hope I just get 10 seconds. I mean, I gave some pretty good stories there. <laughs> you gave me an hour of the reel that yeah. I'm going to cut up, and I'm going to release all of my stories. But you had everybody's stories, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. And, you know, my involvement was minimal. Your thing, 
you man, you made him look all sexy against a brick wall. <laughs> he was like standing there like a rock star. Yeah. You 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 were in it a lot. And yeah. as far as and he's such a history buff anyway, sure, right? Sure, and living yeah. through it, but finding these stories and things that I didn't even know, like the Guns N' Roses night. Were you you were not at the Guns N' Roses show? I, I was there, yeah. Oh, <laughs> do tell. I was not there that night. Well, I you know I can only tell secondhand stuff because I wasn't backstage, but I know what I heard about. I know what I saw on stage, <laughs> uh, and I know what the dressing room smelled like after <laughs> they played them. Um, but yeah, it was it was crazy. I mean, I was upstairs watching them on Slash's side, and I decided to move to the front where the where the sound man was, mixed position. So I got there and moved around. I'm watching them. I'm like, man, it sounds amazing. I mean, they were they were on. They were killing it. It just on fire. The beginning of the tour, you know, just great. And then I realized there was only one guitar in the PA, <laughs> <laughs> and that was Slash's. And so I, I focused in on Izzy straddling, and, and he was just falling all over the stage. And I noticed it was really weird. You know, he had a big amp stack, a Mesa Boogie stack. There was this huge Samoan-looking guy standing behind the amplifier, and... Uh, so I, I like I noticed how Izzy was kind of you know stumbling, and I noticed the big guy he reaches out and he turns the knob <laughs> down on the amp head. He's turning him his volume down. I'm like, oh man, like road crew guy turning turning his guitar down. I'm like, it must be really bad. It's not in the PA. Like wow, what's going on? Well, just then. Izzy Stradlin turns around from the front of the stage, runs back, and just rolls all the knobs to 10, right? <laughs> he, he knew what was going on. He knew they were turned out, right? Uh. Then he runs to the front of the stage again. The big guy's standing there. And then he does this backwards run and slams into the amp stack. The whole thing buckles. It will, all would have gone down, except this dude was like the size of like a football player, like a lineman. Holds on to the amps, keeps them from falling, and keeps and Izzy's leaning against the amps like you know he's just holding both of them up. He runs to the front of stage again. At the end of the set, he takes off this like three thousand dollar Gibson hollow body and he throws it into the audience. I'm like, wow, I'm yeah. like <laughs> that's rock and roll. That's yeah. totally rock and yeah. that, that dude. I don't know what he's on, but he's wasted. <laughs> oh, man, ah, Hammerjacks, the good old days. You know right? what? That's one of the my favorite parts of the film because one of the reasons you make a documentary like this yeah. right is to try to hold on to everybody's memories right. of these events and that part of the film it's hilarious it's yeah it's great because <laughs> everybody everybody's got different memories yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially especially the part about the you know urinating in yeah. the back because right. somebody's like you know it was it was Izzy on, in one of their books they said Izzy took a leak on the manager's desk right, right? and Max Steve, machine, Steve Kitches is like not nah, with slash right. in the vending machine right. <laughs> Right and some and oh, it was on uh, Mike Brillhart. It's like nah, it was Izzy on the, the CO2, CO2 tanks. tanks. So right. it's like everybody had a slight. It's all close, right? But everybody has a slightly different yeah. uh, memory of what went down. And I heard it was the dressing room that yeah, we're right. right. <laughs> and I swear it, it smelled like it yeah. afterwards. It smelled like <laughs> for it. the next three weeks. <laughs> no, it was oh, a, yeah. like the next Permanent. year or two. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It, it like never went away, yeah. and that was like, he pissed excellence is what you're telling. <laughs> oh my god, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Oh man. But I, it, those dressing rooms too, they were like they were pristine prior to that. Like like we had played so many dives, you know, coming up. With and and Hammerjacks was nice. Oh, it was so nice. It was like we had two rooms. There was a bathroom shower. in the middle with a shower. Yeah, remember the shower? I'm sure, we nothing, like, I'm sure nothing went down in there. No, 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 no never. No, totally <laughs> not. But uh, I never showered. In there. <laughs> you should ask Louie for the footage of that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's got it. I bet he's got it. I was afraid oh, of my, my feet sticking to the bottom. Of it. But uh, there was no graffiti on the dressing room walls. I mean, it was just, it was like perfect. And then after that, after that Guns N' Roses show, it was like, oh, man. It just became another gig. <laughs> <laughs> John Allen's here. We're at Costas. We're celebrating 31 years. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery, as well as our friends at Goodwill and Window Nation, 866-90-NATION. Giving you a better deal than they gave me, honestly. It's, it's 0% financing. You buy two, you get two free. You definitely need it on these cold days. Um, it is a cold holiday. I love that the trees here. Gina Shock's coming by later. Uh, Michael Gell's already here from Milkshake and Beyond Words. We're going to be telling old uh, rock and roll stories. That's more Marble Bar, right? Like, yeah. literally, yeah. that's like even a generation before. We're going to talk right. punk rock. You and I were kids in the 70s when Gina Shock was doing her thing and yeah. making her way westward. 
Anne Marie, I want to ask you about the not just the Guns N' Roses night, but these stories. Because you were one of the people firing questions at me on the stage at Merriweather to try to jog my memory about what was the best show, what's the memory, what do you remember about the being in the out? Everybody had a memory of hitting the backstage red uh, button yeah, yeah. and looking up and waving up at the video. Yeah. And it took me until today to, to get remember in, get in the back that door. I was one of the guys in there. I'd look on the little black and white, and I was <laughs> hitting the button in the <laughs> office, people. letting people, oh, that's, that's so the band. Funny. You might want to let them in. You know what I mean? Well, you know what's great about that? I was like, I was like everybody's like, oh, this exclusive thing where you go to the back door. I'm like, well, everybody got in the back door. So <laughs> wasn't that exclusive, man? Everybody we talked to was getting back and door. Well, everybody had a story. That was yeah, the way you, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. only one door. Yeah. And well, there was no bounce. There was was no, it. it was just, it was a, it was a garage door kind yeah, of story. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I remember, I remember early on there may have been a secretary or someone at the desk who would, you know, judge whether you were worthy to come in. They'd hit the buzzer. But, uh, it was usually Anne Marie or Jill. Well, <laughs> well you, there was usually Nikki. somebody there, like full, you know, manning it full, you know, full time. Um, but yeah, there was uh, a lot of times when we just look up and oh yeah. Oh, okay. I was total Let Wayne's world. In. I was like holding yeah. my pass up, right, you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. One, I remember one day I went down. I had I had band rehearsal that night, but I knew there was a big show in town playing there. It was Oasis. It was on their first tour. Wow! And I went down. I hit the buzzer. Somebody let me in. I walked in. It was Liam Gallagher. No way. He was way. sitting behind nice. the desk uh, <laughs> with a Heineken. Your hair's long enough. Yeah. You're in. Uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> and he kept hitting the buzzer. He's like, eh, 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 eh. He, he was messing with me. And I was like, all right, fucker. Like, that's you, you know. <laughs> uh, that's and great. it was Liam. And he was dr he was drinking a Heineken at like four in the afternoon. Uh, that's great. So this I mean, it's, uh, jogging memories here that are amazing. Um, Two days ago is the five-year um, anniversary of the death of Pat Denisio from mm. the Smithereens. Yeah. Pat and I were close. The band and I are still close to this day. Jimmy Babjack, those guys. There's a picture of me with Mike, Dennis, Jimmy, and Pat on the top of the stairs. I'm wearing The Lost. They were a band, The Lost. I'm wearing a Lost shirt for some reason. I think Maria Malta from uh, Atlantic Records gave me that, and I was trying to pimp her band. It was a cool shirt. It was black. It said The Lost on it. Yeah. So I'm wearing that. And, and that picture showed up in my timeline right. Tuesday, and yeah. I knew I was getting together with you guys. And I just randomly, it was so much about the movie watching it once that I didn't, like, take notes or whatever, but this just came back to me. So I'm watching it, and I'm waiting for myself, and I'm seeing John, and I'm waiting for myself, and I'm hearing stories, and I'm pointing, and I'm there's Kitches, and I'm t t telling old stories, Tom Perry. And at the end of the end of, the, of your film, you had video footage of walking down the backstage yeah. steps, the steps that I was on, mm -hmm. and it, like, I got, like, yeah. it hit me, and I'm like, holy sh... Like, I haven't been there in 30 years. That's still a place. Yeah. Now, it is yeah. a space above where tailgates have been blowing, you know, barbecue in that parking lot, because it's literally that airspace is the tailgate lot where the Ravens are, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, parking lot D or whatever it would be at this point. But I'm thinking to myself, that... That's like a rock and roll cosmic space that's gone. Yeah. That that stairwell, every oasis, every Guns N' Roses, Kiss. I mean, just go through Debbie Hare. I mean, anybody that was ever there, and you can name them all, that that step, everybody went upstairs because the dressing room was nice. You didn't have to hang out in the bus. You could come upstairs, and it was cold beer, and you could breathe a little bit, and it was really cordoned off there was only one way up was one stairwell so you kind of had to have some privilege to get there it was right. private yeah, you, you, had, know? you had to go through the office and then then there was an open area and then that rickety it, it looked rickety it wasn't but it was like it was they were wooden it was, yeah, yeah it was there were old wooden steps that went up and then went to the right and went up to that giant safe that was back there yeah. backstage too yeah. but that those steps man it after watching an hour of these stories and learning stuff I didn't know, I mean, literally, I didn't know as much about nobles and, you know, that space. I knew it was there, but I didn't have pictures. or sure. And you had bartender. You had stories. But that piece got me. And John and I were going back and forth. The, the, the part I think he and I laughed the most about was Louis was still the star uh -huh. of yeah. your of your documentary. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, and as he should be, right? Yeah. I mean, like, totally... I mean, we're talking characters of all characters. Oh, my God. He's it. I mean, you talk yeah. about hard to edit out stories, man. <laughs> he had so much good stuff. You know, you, uh, you wanted to leave every second of what he was saying in yeah. that He has his own film. documentary. Right? There's he a is. good story yeah. about that uh, footage of the um, staircase, too, because yeah. what happened with that? You know, when we started working on this, we were sort of 
doing it on our own and it was pretty quiet but as things as we got closer to the end people were finding out about it and people were coming out of the woodwork like hey I'd love to do something let me let yeah. me give you some music yeah. let me give you some pictures mm -hmm. so there's a filmmaker named Rudy Childs who's local but mm -hmm. he's done a lot of photography for like priest and stuff like that like big stuff yeah. and he got in touch and he's like hey uh, and I looked up all his credits I'm like oh man this guy's done some stuff and he's was like was he part of the heavy metal parking lot did he, did he so, shoot some of that so no so no he's friends with those guys he right. worked on a heavy metal picnic a lot of that was his footage okay so uh Rudy got in touch and is like hey I got all this backstage footage from Hammerjacks would you yeah. would you like to have a look wow. at him like dude yeah, but I don't know if I can afford... He's like, no, no, no. It's mm -hmm. free. Just take it. Nice. And we already had the story about the CO2 tanks, and I'm looking at that, and the guys are walking down from the band Hawaii. Mm -hmm. They're walking down the steps. I'm like, there there's the CO2. The tanks. There they are, mm -hmm. you know? And there's the vending machine, and there's every... It's like, so... Well, all watching this, it as a fan, it was a there... You it was an oh my god moment. Well, you like got well, and you, you have to save that to you the have end to know movie, as, as right? somebody that's like editing the film when you're a year into the edit and you've heard the story over and over, and then there's video of that exact thing. It's yeah. like oh my god, this is the greatest. So I'm glad you picked that part out because that's you know that's really special. That footage is like the chances yeah. that somebody took video of walking down the steps is yeah. ludicrous. Well, you know? Brillhart's um, DJ booth yeah. that sat off the office that literally you had to kind of walk through it. It, it kind of yeah. was like the walls. It was in the walls yeah. between the two clubs, you know, and he hid back. He, I mean, he has the great stories of hiding people there because it was a great place to hide. I hid there. Anytime Kitchis or Perry, like, dude, you got a ghost. They don't want a music critic back here. Just go hang out. Just hide with Brillhart till the band goes on stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And literally, I have those memories of all of that, but video footage of all of it was so available for bands you're banging the skins on stage with child's play. I mean, kick stuff. Like, it was a special place to play. And if you had a camcorder, a high eight, 1989, and you were chips enough from enough, this is probably a place where you pulled the video yeah, camera out a little right. bit. If you were, as Gina Shock was for the Go Go's, a documentarian, a documentarian mm -hmm. for your band, mm -hmm. right? Literally. Right, right. Yeah. How much stuff did you get that you could just couldn't use of that sort of magnitude? Oh, ton. Tons of stuff. I mean, look, I mean, just interview stuff is, like I said before, probably 50 hours worth of stuff that we haven't released. That you know, what do you, the, there are things that some people have great interviews where it's just like you can't use it all, and some people talk for an hour and you really they only got 45 seconds worth of good stuff, <laughs> but you got a lot of footage, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, there's also a lot of video that exists that we don't have access to. It's old VHS stuff and that kind of thing. Of like basically every band that played for a four or five year stretch in the late yeah. 80s, early 90s exists. So there everything was around. pro shot. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, there was a camera right yeah. at the soundboard, and whether you knew it or not, as the band, somebody was videoing you. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You were big because I, I have a kicks board. I have a crack the sky. Yeah. I mean, and I have them on VHSs that I bought yeah. at a flea market in. 1993, yeah. you know, literally, or somebody dropped it off and gave it to me, and I, I don't know that I, I mean, I have it. It says kicks on it, Hammerjacks, December 1988 or whatever, and I know it's that. I mean, it wasn't held, it wasn't a cell phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, and I, so I know there's some quality to it, other than the cellular falling apart or whatever sure, at sure, this point. Sure. But I'm figuring people were offering that sort of stuff to you. Right? And there's a lot of stuff that exists too with, with musicians that we don't have any contact with and weren't interviewed and it didn't make as much sense to put it in the film. A lot of the footage that we used from live bands was, you know, included people that we interviewed that wanted to be part of us. Sure. So there's stuff that exists that is just like, you know, Ace, Ace Freely on stage and stuff like that, whereas we don't have any real connection with that. Steve Kitches is calling. Hey, Steve. <laughs> But um, to him last week. Our yeah, ears are but, buzzing. but also, man, you know, tons of photography <laughs> that we didn't get to fit in. I mean, just oh. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures so, that are great so that just didn't, that you know, didn't have a spot for it, or, or you know, you have one picture in the film, you find find one that works a little bit better, so you drop out the original picture, and it's just like so much stuff that's, well, that, that's that was available. the biggest the biggest challenge for me doing all the the, the photos and there's so many photos and we wanted to try to get in as many bartenders mm -hmm. and. Um, but it, it was hard. It was really hard to do that. Yeah, um, I think for Anne Marie in particular because she knew everybody. For me, it's all just people. It's like that's a good picture. That's mm -hmm. a cool looking picture right. of a bartender. For her, it's like, oh, that person passed away, and this year have this to person include that. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah. I got a great story about this person, that kind of yeah. thing. So it's so. Well, it's, there's uh, a lot of people are alive, right? And yeah. more than that, everybody. It's a special time in people's lives. It's that's special right. to me. It's special to you. In different and it's different in every way. Yeah. You made money there. You were trying to, you know, play stadiums there. I mean, you were just there to have a good time for College Park. I That's was right. there working. Like every, you know, and 
and, and so much I think came out of it into the documentary that was meaningful to me. You know, like That's good. I, I, I um, how did you feel? Because you and I haven't even talked about it. I was, I was going to ask you before they got here if you got here early. I was going to say, hey man, tell me how, how you really felt about it. I know you love Louis. Louis was the star, the graffiti, right? Louis was Louis. Yeah, <laughs> Louis, Louis was incredible. <laughs> the graffiti. <laughs> Graffiti yeah. cannons. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. No, Louis is Louis is a character. I mean, he told me stories back then that um, you probably left out, right? <laughs> because he, you know, he he went through a really excessive phase. Yeah. Like you know, he he was on top of the world, man. Like you know, remember the scene in Scarface with the mountain of uh, <laughs> yeah, white yeah, stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He told me that there was you know, there was a period where you know that <laughs> right, was, that yeah. was his life you know and and I mean things were really wrong. The club was open seven days a week. They never closed. Um, even in a, I went up there one time on a Monday night in a snowstorm. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and there were still 325 people in there. Right? There weren't that many people there, <laughs> but but they were open. Yeah, they were open for business. And and the thing about the club that was they didn't do music you know uh, until later and they didn't do it with a frequency until later it was all predicated on i mean the place was packed at midnight on a saturday night you know like people it would be empty until like 11 30 and then by midnight it was jammed and and it was a like you talked about meeting the girl it was a pickup place i mean it was massive massive meat market. The thing that you really caught for someone like my son, who's now 37, who went to the other, the second building he built down on... uh, 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 on, um, Guilford. 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 I was going to say center, but that's what I think by the sun, by the DAC. My son had been in that building, and I'm like, dude, this is pretty much almost piece for piece what Hammer Jacks looked like. It was an incredible thing. But the, the, the ingress and egress of people from room to room because it was a house of rooms yeah and right and you would go in and out of these rooms yeah you did the circuit it was you, you, you would walk around yeah. and see because she was in pot you didn't have text you could define if i knew you were there for bad that night and i was there and i'm like meet me there where how would you find anyone right. in there right? Right, right so you would walk around and that's the meat market yeah like i totally yeah. it came back to everybody was looking at every it was like a boardwalk yeah literally all yeah. night long mm-hmm. No one ever sat still in Hammerjack. It was such right, a right. massive club and with the different courtyards, as they, as they said, you know. And uh, uh, I just remember, I was just a memory talking about <laughs> on the walkie-talkies and, uh, you know, Mo to Courtyard 3. Mo is in Courtyard 3. You know, like, um, we need more Bud Dry. We yeah. need more Bud Dry. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a great place. I mean, just, just an insane place. And then, yeah, when we, we – you were – back to your original question – when we finally had the opportunity to play the place, because only nationals played it up to this point, and uh, so what did they do? It was the big. You had to sell a lot of tickets. Yeah, right, well, literally. Yeah. Well, what did they yeah. do? They put the locals in on a Monday night, <laughs> right? In a snowstorm, <laughs> like, the, yeah, like like the worst <laughs> night you know you could you could fathom, right? We'll put the we'll put the let the locals in, and we did like 800 people on a Monday night. It was yeah, awesome, you know. Great. We were we thought that was really impressive. You're too big to play the seagull yeah, anymore. Oh, babe. <laughs> what, what, what is, the seagull just closed. Hey, closed yeah, up. yeah. It just all closed. Louis, don't put them out business <laughs> down here. The showboat, no. No, the, you the, know who was the happiest about that? The people lived on Middleborough Road. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Nanticoke. <laughs> One night when we played down there, uh, this, is, this is off topic, but... Is this uh, that Poison open for you? No. <laughs> no, this is... We opened for Jim Danny's Black Oak, Arkansas. Oh, man. <laughs> and I saw a girl that I went to high school with, uh, and we went somewhere else, and we, we, as we were coming back, the bar was letting out, and she's like, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm like, what? There were houses that were that had little chain like fences. Their yards went right up to Nanticoke Road, and the parking lot just, you know, appeared at the end where Seagull was. And she's like, "That's my sister's car. It was in the front yard of somebody's <laughs> house." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that hilarious. Was, that was bad. So that kind of stuff, you know, that kind of stuff sort of happened. You know, at, at Hammerjacks, there was a huge security staff. And at the end of the night, I just remember them trying to get people to go home was like such a huge task because right. everybody, we talked about tailgating, it was like people didn't want the night to end, you know, so they were out in the parking lot and they had this 
big crew of these huge, you know, guys in the like satin jackets, the hammer jack satin. <laughs> and they, I, it was Time like, a, to go home. It was, yeah, gotta get out of here. And it was like a cartoon to me. They would all kind of for, be in formation. It was like, they would, they would, like, <laughs> <laughs> and a big cloud of dust behind them. We're like, hey, you want, get out of here. You know, uh, and they turn around, hey, you. I was never there at 4 a.m. I don't know what great, happened. Great. You know? It was oh, its man. own separate little party afterwards, for yeah. sure. Well, let's yeah. talk about the documentary. Steve Naranch is here. Anne Marie, John Allen, we're at celebrating 31 years. All brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. Um, you're going to get, I feel like Oprah in holidays. One for you. One for you. Oh, yeah, Holiday nice. cash drops. I'm giving them away down here at Costas. Uh, we're having some fun. It's all brought to you by our friends at Goodwill, as well as Window Nation. Uh, we're doing a best of sort of celebration the next couple of weeks, celebrating 31 years at WNST. These are the Holiday cash drops. Our friends at Goodwill and Window Nation as well. All right, so... Documentary, uh, I had some Vimeo secret yeah. handshake password, passcode thing. I didn't even know you had seen it, so he and I were like BSing about coming together today. When can people see this? Because I ain't tried it in West Virginia to watch the damn thing. <laughs> yes. it'll, be, it'll be ready before Christmas. So it should be streaming, depending on when this airs, mm -hmm. streaming next week. It's ready to go. The streaming's all set. So this and is a uh, Christmas gift, is what yeah, you're saying. Well, again, I brought your tree. It's, it we got it. We got it timed perfectly, so it'll show up on like the 26th <laughs> for everybody. But um, waiting on the uh, the DVD test copy to show up, which should be here Tuesday. So we're right there, man. Oh, oh, so are you selling DVDs? Or are you doing? Some you know what? How we, I was gonna just gonna do streaming. I said nobody cares about DVDs anymore. We put something up on Facebook. People are like, yes, please. Yeah, I, I want to own it. I wanna, yeah. yeah, I want to physically. Same not. thing with the, same thing with soundtrack, where we talked about doing a soundtrack, and people are like, you yes, do. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right? We're I, doing a Blu-ray, man. We're I need a it. VHS tape. <laughs> yeah. Got well, beta? What's right. going on? <laughs> well, that's right, man. And, you know, we're, we're not stupid, so we just did it on a print-on-demand thing. It's just like yeah. whatever. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, somebody wants is, to, you there, know? is there a night? I guess is what I'm asking you. Is there a yeah. night where you're going to put it up on a screen yeah, somewhere? Yeah, we are. We're, we're all going to come and get we're working. Yeah, yeah. We're working on a screening in Baltimore in February, and actually... John is planning on bringing stone horses to play, which is yeah. super exciting. I mean, for me, it's like I don't, well, don't care. Don't have to I, I need to get the right night, so at least let me hold the date in my calendar. Yeah. So I'm not off seeing Springsteen or something. Well, listen, hey, you know, we don't. Well, we don't have a firm date yet, but it's going to be February. But the for me, it's like I don't. I don't care if we do the movie again. It's like let's let the band play, right. man. Let's let's have some beers and watch some music, right? But it's like, it's you know, it'll be cool for a lot of people that have been waiting to see it to see it. And for for us, we're really encouraged because. You sit there for all this time. It's the same thing with music. You're right. in the studio, right? Where you're working on stuff, working on stuff, working on stuff. You sort of lose perspective. Is this yeah. thing good or not? Right. And then when we released it, I mean, for the one, for the first thing, Louis loved it, right? And he he got to me after the after the screen. He's like, "Oh well, I could have told you about embezzlement and all this stuff." I'm like, "Oh man, you know." So he was so he was on board, which was which was good because a lot of it's his story. You want to yeah. you know, it's you want to want to make sure that it's told in the way that he's happy with. I'm glad but he's still here to help tell yeah, it and man. be a part of it. And it was really cool. And then, you know, the other thing that's been a big compliment for us is that clearly for people like us that were there, it brings back a lot of memories. But for, like, your son, for people that we've talked to that are younger that couldn't go there or just weren't in the area or whatever, they're like, man, I missed, missed out. It. This seemed really, really mm -hmm. cool. So, so you, And it was. The, it concern, really was. the concern was you're making it just for people that were there. It's like, well, is that all the only people that are going to watch it and really get it? Right. But people that weren't there are like, oh, my God, that looked like the best place to be. And it was, you yeah. know. So it's a, it's a really big compliment nice. for us. Well, I appreciate you guys taking it on. I appreciate you thinking of me to tell a story or two and make people laugh and yeah. you're going to love it a little bit. I even got to took a cheap shot at Mickey in the film. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> John Allen's here. I think you're gonna hang out, right? Yeah. All right, and and give everybody like how to find the film and what's going on, and and be in touch on this night in February. Yeah, it's called Hammer Jacks the Rockumentary. You can find it on Facebook by just putting that in. Fair enough. Um, our and all the information you can find there. But our film company is called Varla Dogwood, so you can go to varladogwood.com, and that's where you can buy hard copies if you're interested in that. Right. So. It's and all available the, there. And the soundtrack, you were you the soundtrack, to man, is going to be really cool. It's double vinyl, child's play, unreleased. DC Star. There. DC Star is on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I started horses. singing. Is it you? When I like Dude. saw them, I like, mean, I, I, I saw it at the time. I said to my wife, like, they were like really cool Dude. band. Well, man. man, you talk about something that brings you back. The opening 
chords of that. Oh. I'm yeah. like, oh my god, it yeah. feels like I'm going to Shiley Acres. You know, it's yeah. like 1982. Yeah. I just so, had chills. Yeah. Oh, you get chills. I know, man. That that's music, cool. that song. Music. It is. And music that's another thing that's been great about making yeah. this is that people that I grew up listening to, I've gotten to meet, man. So I'm still like nerd out about it. I'm like, I get to go hang out with DC Star, man. This is yeah. awesome. You know, David Simmons from DC Star is like the coolest dude. And so I still have the picture disc of that. Oh, record. Oh, that's incredible. That's so Vinyl, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Vinyl's yeah. heavy, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> get a CD, dude. <laughs> But that's coming, it. Out, that's coming out on Keith Roth's label, Main Man. Keith Roth is with Sirius XM, right? Hair Nation. So it's on his label. So double vinyl. There's going to be CD. We'll sell it as a package with a movie poster. So all that's going to be, uh, you know, again, you can go to Facebook and see all the all the updates. But awesome. that'll be out uh, for order. That should be pre-ordering next week. All right. Yeah. Well, we got rock stars. I'm, I'm like an airport here. I got planes <laughs> landing behind us. All the members love Riot, Beyond Words over there, yeah. giving love, Milkshake. Uh, uh, you know, they, they've done the whole gamut, so I, I'm really looking forward to having them on. John's going to stick around and uh, and hang with us. Did anything you want to say on the M3 thing and the Child's Play thing? Because I don't know that we're going to get into it once Sheena Shock happens, but... You and I, were you at the Child's Play with Brian Jack? Yes, yes, I was. Yeah, and I, I saw Mickey that night. I was with Brillhart and, and Kirk, and there's a picture of all of us. You were just working. You didn't even see me. I didn't no. see anybody. I didn't see Aaron. I didn't see anybody. Um, Dude, I was there. I couldn't. I knew. I was talking to her. I was texting. I couldn't get to we, her because it was so we never packed. Even never even saw each other. No. Oh, I was in the middle of my there. crab cake tour. I drove back from Ocean City <laughs> to come and be a part of it that night. Yeah, that's awesome. No, no, that's no. Awesome, I mean, man. I loved it. And you were fronting the band and it doing great. songs. What and a like, great show it's that was. Huh? Being Izzy and Nick look like a rock star. So, like, f- for you with this child's play, give me what's this going to be? M three. Have you figured this out yet or no? Well, I, th- I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, why did I know? That? I thought we were friends. <laughs> I well, tell people we're friends. Maybe we're not. Well, you know, you know, know. I, I, I've been hoping to get uh, child's play on the M three for a long time, mm-hmm. and uh, finally got the call. The guy hit me up, and and I I wasn't sure it was really going to happen or not. So I didn't want to. Didn't want to put it out there, and then you know, there's a there's a feeling in the music business. I think like, you know, when you say, "Oh man, my band's going to get signed," and then <laughs> that all goes away. Right. Yeah. You, know, you, you jinx it, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I try not to be uh, that superstitious, but it creeps in every once in a while. But yeah, I th- I think um, that was a big success that night in was, August. It, it really was. was. You know, like you were saying, all the old friends that were there were so many people that that we knew. You know, we know. Uh, from over the years, and um, my my biggest focus on that show was to was to honor Brian, to do something special with you know put together a slideshow of all these pictures of the the beginning of the band uh, when the band started out, and and really heavily focus on photos of him, you know him on a skateboard, you know all the, like the different things that he did, and then up through the band getting signed, doing the the Rat Race tour and everything, and um, and I really wanted to to make his family happy. And his his uh, his his child Adrian, um, I wanted her to be happy about everything and and have them involved. And then I think the M3 thing came about because of that mm-hmm. show. Uh, I think they saw the reaction on Facebook and they saw the videos of the crowd singing My Bottle. And, and but you guys were great that night. Like I didn't know what to expect because of rehearsal. I didn't either. I li- listen, <laughs> age gets to all of us. Yeah. You know how important it is to you, how much you can actually do it yeah. in the way that you want to do it yeah. because you're not 19 anymore, like none right. of us are, right? right? And then to see, well, we're, shit, Brian was, the, he was the front of the band. Like, what, what are we, was, you know, yeah. you're missing him, right? Yeah. So, like, how how good could it be without him? You know, right. you're, you're sort right. of thinking, right? right? Right. And it was just, it, it mattered so much to you. And I know you privately said this to me, that Nick took it on as... Oh, man. Like, he, he, yeah. uh, I mean, he was so good, yeah. and it felt like, oh, my God, he's better than he was in 1990. And yeah. I remember, I was there every night. It's not yeah. like you guys were a sloppy yeah. band or whatever, but you were kids. Well, we, and now, all of a sudden, yeah. you, you know, when you put two, three months into saying, we're going to do an hour and a half as Toby Keith, as good as we, you know, better than we've ever done yeah. it. Dude, I, I stand and applaud, and I thought, if that's the end, drop drop the hat. But yeah. then I see this thing happen this week, and you're on it, and I you hadn't even talked about it, and I thought, well, that's going to, that's, maybe this is your beautiful reward the next five, ten years, this is something you do, you know? Yeah, like, who knows, I mean, I don't, I don't know where it takes us, but but we, like you said, we started rehearsals for that very early. Um, I wanted to do the show in, in April, but we just couldn't get it together, uh, so we, we, you know, booked it for August, which is 
notoriously a terrible month for Baltimore. You know, for to, everybody wants to get their last gas going down to the beach. You know, but we did that show. We're going to try to do the same thing. We're going to try to rehearse months in advance and and really really be together for the show you know it's a it's a different kind of thing though you know those festivals they just kind of throw you up there it's oh yeah throw and go so it's 103 degrees and it's 2 30 in the afternoon yeah it is what it is right you know so but yeah but i um you know we're going to be laser focused and and try to you know give the best show that we can for there's going to be a lot of people there that never saw the band before so i think that that's a that's a big thing and and uh and we're you know planning my wife yeah has never seen the band Hmm. she, uh, did she make? She no, she was sick show, as a right? dog. It was a long story that week. So, so, but yeah, but um, you know, we're gonna have the original. I'm gonna sing, and then we're gonna bring Larry up for a couple of songs, introduce him, say, hey, this is the guy that started the band with uh, with Brian way back when, and try to honor everybody. You know, nice. like, you know, yeah. I'll say something about that, man. Is that, you know. They announce a lineup. Very few. It's hard for M3 to come up with a band that hasn't played yet, right? right? right. And it's also hard for them to come up with bands with so many original members, right? right? right. And so for people in the area, man, it's like when that came out, everybody. I didn't hear people talking about other stuff. There was yeah, I can't get there late. Everybody I mean, was talking I, you know, about like, like holy I, crap, Child's Play is on M3. Mm-hmm. Like there was all like text back and forth. Everybody talking about it, yeah, man. Cool. Friends in Jersey, like oh my god, I'm gonna go now. Because Child's Play is on the bill, so it's so it's a big it's a big deal, man. It's You're gonna making be special. me tear up, man. You're yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Well, I'm You're gonna start drinking early that day. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I, I'm gonna just start Friday. By the time Stick we'll, shows up, oh, I mean, I won't even recognize Jay it. Watt. Come sail away, whatever. <laughs> Amory, Steve, John Allen, we're at Costas. We had a huge a holiday party here. I want to thank Pete and everybody uh, for having us over here today. It's all brought to you by our friends at Goodwill, uh, the Maryland Lottery. I'm giving away holiday. I tell you what, the whole all these bands are gonna get these holiday cash drops. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Roz over at the Maryland Lottery. Uh, uh, you guys are all holding your tickets up. Yeah, yeah. If you win a hundred bucks, you know, buy, buy me some oyster stew or something. I think right. I won the last uh, time you gave. We had a hundred dollar winner here last year. Uh, we had a fifty dollar winner two weeks ago at Pappas. So uh, we, people really win. I've got a handful of uh, Raven scratch offs left as well. Our friends at Window Nation eight six six ninety Nation. You buy two, you get two free. Zero percent finance. You just mention me. You didn't have to mention me. They'll give you the deal without all that. We're going to come back, continue on here for my thirty first anniversary. Uh, we're at Costas. I've already had a little bit of food. We're going to have a crab cake and some crab and puree before it's all over with. And we're talking rock and roll in Baltimore. Rock and roll. Gina Shaw. Uh, our Rock and Roll Hall of Fame queen from Dundalk will be here. John and I are looking forward to uh, chatting more with her about that. All I remember, she ran out the door. I'm coming back for you guys. <laughs> so eight weeks later, here we are. Uh, uh, we'll be together with Gina Shock. Beyond Words is up next. And uh, Love Riot, Milkshake, Old Friends. Um, I'm going to make Joyce come up. And I think Joyce and George, and, and at some point, Lisa's going to get up here. But it's going to continue on. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. We're Costa. Stay with us.